Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and today I'm here to talk to you about running shoe build quality. After testing out lots and lots of brand new running shoes recently, something struck me like a bolt from the blue. The variation in quality between some of the makes is quite drastic at times. I've tested out shoes from Asics, New Balance, Adidas and Nike over the last few months, to name but a few. So let's take a deep dive into some examples. Before we get there, in the comments today, please let me know from your experiences which running shoes got the best build quality? Have any manufacturers in particular been very poor? Have there been any specific models that really stood out from the rest? Or have ended up in the bin very quickly? Let me know in the comments with your opinions and experiences. We'll start off with Asics first. Here's my very seasoned glide ride. It's a bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I certainly think this is the Volvo of running shoes. And I mean that with love. It's built with some care and consideration. I always remember taking this shoe out of the box for the first time and was greeted with the wonderful smell of the Asics high abrasion rubber. But it's really clear that material selection for Asics is very, very high up in their priority list. There's the use of various meshes, various different foams. There's some real thought goes into it. And when you look at the actual build construction of the shoe as well, it's just really solid. Nothing's really scrimped on. They're certainly not misers when it comes to the use of their materials. You know, you could never really describe Asics as Scrooge, could you? Certainly never really a cheap feeling shoe when you buy an Asics. Even when you move to some of the cheaper options like the Evo Ride, for example, the younger brother of the Glide Ride. Quality's still there. There's no sort of little glue marks or anything. It's just all put together in a really pleasant way. Feels like you've got a quality item that's going to last the test of time, a solid shoe. It's just little things like the metal rivets here for the laces to pass through on some of the eyelets. They certainly never scrimp in the heel cup either today. <laughs> always really solid heel cups. Ample rubber always on these as well. Just really well put together shoes. I've never had any major issues with Nasix shoe in terms of quality. I guess at times you could even say they were slightly over-engineered. In the Glide Ride and the Evo Ride, there's masses of tongue. Is it all needed? I haven't noticed any major upper degradation on any of the shoes I've looked at. I've put loads of early miles into the Nova Blast and they've held out really well. The outsole of Asics shoes seems to hold up just as well as the uppers too. So I'll certainly give Asics a yay in terms of running shoe build quality. New Balance next. Gives me a chance actually to talk about the, the Beacon 3. There's some strange information coming out of New Balance about this one. I did email them and ask them if the foam in the Beacon 3 was fresh foam and not Fresh Foam X. And one of their operatives kindly got back to me and said, yes, it is fresh foam. Although other viewers I know have received information from New Balance to suggest that they've been told it is Fresh Foam X. So who knows? It definitely says Fresh Foam X on the tongue. Although I must state, I haven't sampled the midsole myself with my tongue. You go careful doing that, Kev. In terms of uppers, I've found over the course of the last few months that they've held up really well in New Balance shoes. Out the box, the Fuel Cell TC has been a very, very nice shoe, very well put together. It does feel like a quality item, although I guess it should do at that 180 pound price tag. There's no stray stitching on there at all. No signs of separation between the upper and the midsole. There's quite a bit of flex in that midsole as well. It's still looking pretty good, that shoe. Even with my best efforts at trying to dismantle it, I've certainly found that Fuel Cell Foam is a lot more fragile than Fresh Foam X or Fresh Foam. Looking at the 1080 here, it's looking fine after 100 miles. There's a little bit of upper separation towards the very edges of the shoe here, ma mainly where it flexes, really. Again, no strange stitching or anything starting to come apart. Some obvious wear on the sides of the outsole here, but you'd expect that. Did notice a bit of wear though here where the upper's starting to just disintegrate a little bit where you knot the laces here right up towards the top of the tongue. I did obviously get that very strange problem with the Beacon Ones where the insoles just started slipping out. I think it's that the underside of the insole is just so slippery that as you're running in the shoe it just sort of pushes it out over time. Easily remedied though with a bit of adhesive. Although it does make me wonder how that wasn't detected in testing. I haven't experienced that in the Beacon 3 yet, but there's still time. So in terms of out of the box feel for New Balance shoes, I think the shoe build quality is pretty good. Adidas next. Or Adidas, if you're like me. Now, I haven't always got on well with Adidas shoes, as you well know if you're a long-term watcher of this channel. Back in the days, I remember rocking 
the Sambas, and also the Gazelle. Those seemed to fall to bits really quickly at the time. I don't know if I was just wearing them more or something, but they just seemed to disintegrate. I do remember the famous Budgemeister, my cousin, having a pair of Sambas on, the blue ones, and they just seemed to die as sock blue over the course of an evening. But I've been very impressed with some more recent offerings from Adidas. The Ultra Boost 20, the Takumi Sen 6, and the SL20 have all been pretty good out of the box. The Ultra Boost 20 looked like a fantastic quality shoe out of the box, but just didn't quite work for me on foot. I can't really put it down there in terms of the actual build quality. Everything you get from Adidas just seems to be put together with love. Perhaps it's the more simple use of materials. Adidas always seem to scale things back and go with just what's needed. There's no weird glue streaks or anything. The uppers are all well put together. Some of the paint here is not quite so good on the back of the SL20. But you'll be running too fast for anyone to notice that. One thing I always find is there's really consistent production between shoes with Adidas. Weights always seem to be really spot on between the left and right shoes. And as some of you well know, that isn't always the case. I know Tim Gross had a massive difference between a couple of his shoes the other day. I was quite taken back by it. I think that Adidas shoes hold up pretty well over time too. I've still got my pair of Ultra Boost version 4s from 2018. It's over 250 miles on those, and they're still reasonable shoes for gardening. I wouldn't wear them to run now. It's only really the outsole that had worn out. The Boost still had a little bit of squish. The upper on that shoe was still holding out really, really well. So in terms of running shoe build quality from Adidas, pretty good. On to Nike now. So we all know, over the past 18 months or so, Nike have been a little bit shaky in terms of some of their build quality. It's more like consistency, you know? I picked up the Vaporfly Next% Percent Hakone edition earlier on this year. It's a little sloppy in some areas on the shoe in terms of paintwork and application of that outsole rubber as well. Not exactly what you'd expect for a very pricey shoe like that. You can see some of the paintwork's just really shoddy. Almost looks like somebody's just got a sharpie and filled it in. Did you do that, Beast? Where the midsole's mounted as well, it just looks kind of sloppy. Maybe I'm being picky, but it's nowhere near as clear on here as it is in the original version of the Next% Percent that I bought about six months earlier. That's the print here as well, it's just really undefined. Feels pretty good on foot, but when you're paying top dollars like that. The Alpha Fly, on the other hand, just feels like a really well put together quality item to me. These were part of the stock from the US Marathon Trials back in February 2020 and I feel they're much better out the box in terms of quality. No pore stitch in there. The consistency is good between the left and right shoes. They just seem a little more on point than the Hakone Next% Percent I just showed you. Maybe these sort of early production models just had a little bit more care taken about them. Maybe they were hand-picked. Who knows? I remember when I got the Kakuso 4% Flyknit as well. Again, they were much better in terms of finish than the original 4% fly knit that I picked up. I know that the Gakuso version were really limited. I think they were only released on the sneakers apps and they were that limited. The recent Pegasus 37 custom Nike by you that I picked up had some quite shoddy glue marks here and there. And when I took the insoles out, they just kind of appear like different shapes almost. Just left a really weird underfoot feel. You'll remember the Pegasus 36 shield that I reviewed earlier on this year. They felt vastly different between the left and right feet. It's like that underfoot feel just was off. Of course, some of you have also had some odd issues related to the Pegasus Turbo line. Strange sizing in the Pegasus 35 Turbo. Some people have loads of toe box room, others none. And the depth of the toe box seemed to vary hugely. And also, lots of people had that separation issue between the React and the Zoomax foam at the back of the shoe. I've not seen it myself, but I know many of you have. A lot of you had to send the shoes back to get a refund or a replacement. This one's certainly holding up though in terms of quality. Really pleased with it. Oh, it still smells really good as well. That takes me back to the shoe department of Burton's on a Saturday morning in 1990. Oh, that's a good smell. It really is. So in terms of Nike build quality, it's a bit of a mixed bag there. I think kind of need to do better. Let me know your experiences and opinions on the different makes and models of running shoe and the build quality in the comments below. Not sure anybody's ever done a video like this, but I think it was needed. You know, I like to explore new avenues, consider new things, come up with innovative ideas. 
musical interlude. I dug out some Dylan. I like a bit of Bob Dylan from time to time. Blood on the Tracks is the title of this one. I really love the intro track, which is called Tangled Up in Blue, and you're gonna make me lonesome when you go. Really nice vibe to this one, some quite laid back tunes on there. In comparison to some of his other work sort of around that period, certainly when he started to get a bit more electric. I think Dylan's a bit of a acquired taste. Some people really like him, some people don't, but I'm kind of sitting in the middle somewhere. I like some of his stuff and not others. So I've been enjoying listening to this one. I hadn't listened to it for many, many a moon. Okay, time to mosey on out of here. Thanks for watching through to the very end of the video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you're enjoying the channel and you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when my new videos launch. Helps the channel out a lot if you give it a thumbs up like and if you share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.